We have a long, busy road ahead of us. So is the tech truly the sector to watch this season? For more on corporate earnings, we want to bring in Chris Watling. He is Longview Ec Economics CEO and Chief Market Strategist. So talk to us just about where things stand right now, right? We're coming off what was an extremely tumultuous week here for the market. You had the NASDAQ off more than 5%. That selling action that we've seen, is that over or is it more likely to happen here going forward? Um, I think we're probably going to get more. I mean, interestingly, most sell-offs, most sort of corrections, are, uh, most of them are pretty healthy. They're good things for the market. So we shouldn't be too dismayed as long as it's not driven by a big macro shock. But mm. most market sell-offs, you get a wave flush down, then you get a bounce, and then you tend to get a bit more selling. So I, I think that's probably the playbook we're going to get. I think tech earnings this week could probably support the market a bit. and mm. It's a bit oversold short term, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'd, I, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we got a little bit more off. There's some real challenges on liquidity and the feds you know keeps pushing back on cuts and and that's an issue for the market so is the word of the week diversification is the word of the week diversification that's a great word um i i think the word of the week is play the bounce i think that's <laughs> not that that's one word but there you go i like it um but yeah i think um diversification is good if you're if you're looking at six to twelve months this market's been very narrow as we know in the last couple of years, well, year or so, mm -hmm. depending on what time you take in terms of the Magnificent Seven. But I think there'll be a much broader stock market going forwards into next year and beyond. So, Chris, how do you play that balance, given the fact that you're expecting the broader market participation, here, at least in the longer term? But where should people be putting their money today? Well, if you're a short-term trader and you want to pay a one-week bounce, fine. Just buy futures and, and buy mm -hmm. call options on, on, on the futures or, or try playing some of these tech stocks on earnings. But, um, uh, you know, beyond that, really, that's, you know, I think you, you, you want to think about um, selling into strength if you're thinking on a one- or two-month time frame because there's more challenges near term. But as I said, beyond, beyond that, yeah. if one really overcomplicates things, um, I think we're looking for rotation as you get into the second half of this year and a change of sector leadership globally. Well, talk to us about what that will look like. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think what we'll see is as rate cuts come, come, start coming through from the major central banks of the world, first in Europe and probably the, Bank of Eng the ECB and the Bank of England, then, and then eventually in the Fed uh, over here in the States, that'll start supporting growth cyclically. Mm. So, you know, you want to buy cyclicals when central banks are cutting rates. Mm -hmm. When growth's a bit soft and central bank cut rates, you buy cyclical, old economy, value, also keep buying energy, and you don't tend to buy the big cap tech. They've had a great run, they've been terrific stocks, we've all enjoyed it, um, but there's too much concentration in those stocks. I mean, I travel around the world talking to people all over the place. Every man and his dog owns, owns the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> it's over-owned, you know, we need, we need to rotate into something else, and there's some incredibly cheap stocks in the US and globally, actually. That, that will benefit from rate cuts. Chris, how much of the catalyst, at least in the near term, when you take a look at earnings, those expectations there, when you take a look at there's still this expectation that the Fed is going to cut before the, the end of the year, how much of that has already been priced into the market? Well, in terms of pricing and rate cuts, we've been pricing them out, mm -hmm. of course. We've been pricing them out in the last few months. We've been pricing the amount out in yeah, the next I, year. But, but I guess I just mean in terms of the optimism, right? That run-up that we had seen prior to that recent action that we've seen over the last week or two here. But how much of that optimism do you think is already reflected in these current valuations? Oh, I think there's, 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 there's plenty of upside mm -hmm. in, in a lot of stocks. I'd be, I'd be more cautious on the Magnificent Seven, but there's plenty of upside in a lot of stocks because we're, we're entering a rate-cutting cycle. You know, and the value rate, you can't really judge a market by the level of the P-E ratio. You can only really judge it by the flow of money and the flow of rate cuts and that sort of stuff. And, and actually, if we're going into a mid-cycle slowdown, which I think we probably are, then rate cuts are terrific for the stock market globally. And you want to pick your sectors. But yeah, I think there's lots more to price in in that sense. So you're making me think about like the difference between a tech company and a staple and all of these things. When does Apple become a staple as compared to a tech company? Yeah, great question. I think it's a defensive cash m modest grower. Uh, it's sort of in its own bucket, isn't it? It's kind of weird. It's, uh, you know, when, when, you know, in the last 12 months, you want, you don't want to buy cyclicals because they be, they were hiking rates. So you want to hide somewhere. You don't want to buy, you know, um, defensives because rates were going up as well, generally. Um, so you hide in big cap defensive stocks, and Apple is a classic example of that. You're comfortable. You can park money there. And so I think, I, think in, I, I think when we start cutting rates, people will be like, well, I, I don't want Apple. I've had, in fact, to be honest, they've already concluded that, haven't they? It peaked last year in July. So um, it's a great stock. It was a great run. Buy something else.